Welcome to this video presentation on discrete signals. Um, in the first presentation you would have seen that a discrete signal is basically just a sequence of numbers. And in this um, presentation I'm just going to run through a, a demonstration of how we can obtain a discrete signal of, uh, sequence of numbers um, from the real world. Um, so in this case I'm going to, the setup I have is um, I have a light sensor here and this light sensor basically generates a voltage signal based on the colour it's over. So I have a, a number of colours here, like white, green and black. And what should happen is the voltage on this blue cable here, that's, the, the, that's connected to the output of the sensor. This cable is connected to a data acquisition board. Uh, now it's a fairly cheap one. Uh, it's one we put together ourselves called DAC Light, and there's more information online about it if you search for DAC Light. Um, but basically, the voltage signal is sent to the board, and this board has a little microcontroller on it. It's uh, a PIC 18F4620, and on this little microcontroller, there is what's called an analog to digital converter. And that analog to digital converter will take this voltage signal and convert it into a sequence of numbers. So this does all the hard work. Um, it's really um, a, a reasonably cheap um, device. The, the microcontroller itself costs about five euro. Um, it costs us about twenty euro to put the board together. Um, and as I said, you can find more information about this online. Um, now. The discrete signal isn't much use to us on the microcontroller, so what we're going to do is send all the data that the microcontroller captures, send it back up to my PC via this USB cable. And on my PC I also have a little application um, that I, uh, or a function that I put together in MATLAB. So MATLAB is, a, is just a signal processing tool. Um, and my MATLAB function, called DACLIGHT, will take the data from the board um, and store it in this variable IP. And this var so this variable IP, after I run the function, will have my sequence of numbers. Uh, now, as well as taking data from the board, I can always also send information down to the board through the USB cable. Uh, and one of the things I need to set up is I need to tell the board how frequently to capture the data. Because this voltage signal is changing continuously. Uh, and I'm reading that voltage signal every so often and converting it into a number. This here specifies how many numbers I will capture a second or the, it specifies the sampling rate or the sampling period or sampling interval. Um, so there are three terms that you need to be comfortable with. Sampling rate, sampling period, sample, sampling interval. They're all basically the same thing. I'm also going to specify how much information I want to capture uh, so I'm saying I would like to capture 2,500 samples or 2,500 numbers. Um, so if I'm capturing at 100 samples every second, that would mean I capture about 25 seconds of data. Okay. So this is one example of how we can capture a discrete signal onto our computer. Okay. Um, right. So I'll just run that function now. Okay return. It does some initialization and now we're ready to go. I just need to set up the height of the sensor first. Okay, it's, it's sensitive to the height. So now I'm on white and as I move it over green you see, uh, see a jump in the, the signal. So the amplitude has risen. And also over black the amplitude increases again. I'll jump back down to white and you'll see, oh, I changed the height. Okay, so my hand moved a little bit with the sensor, but you could see as I moved um, this first part here, the height of the sensor was changing a little bit. So you have to get the height of the sensor correct. So I think the optimum is about five millimeters, and it's really during this period here that I was really capturing the data or had the sensor c correctly set up. So we can see how the voltage signal changed over time. But the voltage signal was converted into a sequence of numbers by my analog to digital converter. And those numbers were sent back up to my PC 
via the <coughs> via the USB cable. Okay, so let's just look at that a little bit closer. So let's see. Um, so remember that the first part of this data here, so up to around 500 samples or so, I was really just adjusting the height of the sensor. So um, the data isn't really easy to interpret. Um, so it's more around this region here is is when the sensor was over white. So during that period of time, um, the value that the sensor was sending back, or not this, uh, the value that the the board was sending sending back is about the 40 to 50 mark. Um, now that equates to a sensor voltage of um, about 1 volt. Okay, I just know that from experience. Then when, when the sensor was over green we had this jump um, and we see that the values are roughly about um, about the 100 mark or so. Okay, and that was green for about, let's see, how long was it green? zoom in here. It was green from about 1200 samples up to 1700 samples and that would be 500 samples and seeing that it was sampled at 500 samples every second that would equate to 5 seconds. So it was over green for about 5 seconds and then we shifted up to black and we could see when the sensor was over black the board returned a value of about 240 Okay, so it was about 240, which equates to a close enough to five volts, which again I just know from experience. Okay, so that's that's a plot of the data. Now we have to remember that the data is a plot of a sequence of numbers, and each individual sequence of number is shown as a green dot. Now a lot of the dots are close together up here, so it's difficult to identify them. But if you look at this quick transition period, just around here, you can see in each individual green dot which represents each sample or each numerical value. Um, so if we go back to the MATLAB command prompt just remind ourselves that the discrete signal is just a sequence of numbers so I'm just going to display those sequence of numbers by typing the following. I put this little tick um, to get the numbers to be displayed in a vertical line. So let's just hit return and there's all the numbers associated with the discrete signal. I'm just going to um, slowly scroll through these numbers and we'll just see the different values. Now these numbers are the signal toward end. So that's that part of the signal. So I'm looking for a long sequence of um, values of around 240 to show me that it was over black for a period of time. So this is looking like the period during which it was black. So I'm just scrolling through those numbers. And I'd expect to see a jump now to values around 100 soon enough. Um, once we, yeah, this looks, this region here now looks like it's indicative that the sensor was over green. So that should be green for a, a long period of time as I scroll through these numbers. Remember, there should be about 500 numbers when the sensor was over green and that's a, the values of around 100 and I should see a step change again soon enough um, after five, oh, there we go so this, there's a step change again which showed that the sensor was over white okay that's that region there and I'd say it was white if we just flick back to the graph it was white for about that roughly looks like it's from about 500 to 1200 so it's white for about seven seconds, so there should be a long sequence of white numbers, and I'm scrolling through them quickly now. And then we'll have a few fluctuations for when the sensor was over. Uh, the sensor, the height of the sensor wasn't kept constant. Okay, and that's that region. Okay, but it's much easier, of course, to plot the data like this, rather than scrolling through the numbers. Um, so you'll regularly see signals, discrete signals, just being plotted when you're analysing them. Okay, so it's important that you recognise that um, we used a, 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 a light sensor there in the example, but we could have easily replaced that with any sensor. A sensor can pick up heat or light intensity or it could be a heart signal, it could be a brainwave signal, it could be a wind speed signal, it doesn't really matter. The same principle would be applied. Okay, So thank you very much for your attention.